Hello everybody, it is that time of the year again where we take a look at my older Macintosh hardware and see how well it is holding up here in 2019. This is my 13-inch early 2011 MacBook Pro, and I've used this thing as my daily driver all the way until a couple months ago when I finally upgraded to a newer 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now, this machine is still a fantastic computer for everyday tasks, and I still highly recommend it for basic activities. If you're looking to do higher-end video editing, it's definitely recommended to get a more modern computer. But for everyday tasks, this thing is fantastic. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look around the machine. On the top of the machine, or back of the screen, we will find our light up Apple logo, which is definitely something that would still be cool to have on the modern MacBooks of today. On the left hand side, we'll find our ports. Here is the first generation MagSafe power connector before they made it slimmer. Ethernet, FireWire 800, first generation Thunderbolt, two USB 2.0 ports, an SD card slot, audio out, it can also be used as audio in, and our battery status indicator. On the front of the machine, we'll find our sleep-wake indicator light and an IR receiver. On the right-hand side of the machine, we will find our Kensington lock port in addition to our super drive. Opening the machine up at the top of the screen, we will find a indicator light for when the 720p EyeSight camera is turned on, and I believe an ambient light sensor. In the upper right-hand corner is the dedicated power button. In the opposite, upper left-hand corner, is the microphone. Of course, then we have the keyboard and trackpad. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl in three, two, one. Inside this machine, we have a Intel Core i5 running at 2.3 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, Intel HD Graphics 3000 with 512 megabytes of video memory. Now, if you have less than eight gigs of RAM in the machine, you only have 300 and something megabytes of video memory, so it's definitely worth it to at least have eight uh, gigabytes of memory in the machine. And I have a 525 gigabyte SSD, which is also highly recommended, because it speeds up everything from booting to loading applications, and, uh, well, you can imagine, I suppose. It is running 10 13.6 High Sierra, which is the highest officially supported operating system. You can patch the newer versions to run on this machine. However, I don't really recommend it because it has certain graphics requirements that this machine does not um, meet, and that's why they didn't put it on this particular machine. So, here we are at the desktop. The fans are ramping up a little bit because I was just using this thing to do some uh, video and stuff like that, so it's already kind of warm. But normally it wouldn't do that. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the internet here. Everything from Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, they're all up to date and they do anything you'd want to do on the internet just fine. I haven't had any issues with anything from surfing the web, playing an internet-based game, or watching you know 1080p 60 frame per second video on YouTube, Netflix, whatever. It all runs it just fine. It's all fully supported. I've never had any issues with any of that. I've never tried watching 4K video. I don't know why you would do such a thing because the screen isn't that resolution anyway to take advantage of that capability. So basically everything on the internet works just as it would on a modern 2019 computer. Moving on, we have some productivity applications. I use Word and Excel quite a bit. So here is the 2019 versions for Mac. We'll go ahead and open Word here. And we'll hit Create. And here we are. Of course, you can do things. This is Thing. Yes. And we'll just close that. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Looks like this icon didn't get updated when I updated these. Uh, I'll take care of that in a bit. But we have Excel here as well. Go ahead and hit Create. And there is your document. Nice and fast. Of course, the rest of the Office Suite 
works on here as well for Mac. Of course, we have the Excel that we looked at, OneNote, Outlook, and this icon just didn't update because I haven't clicked on it yet. PowerPoint, the new Teams thing, and Word, of course. So let's move on to Photoshop. I have CS5 installed in this machine and it works just fine. As you can see, here are the other Creative Suite applications for the fifth iteration or whatever. And they all work fine. I mostly use Photoshop though. I don't use the others too often. So let's go ahead and just open that for a second here. And there we go. I use this a lot um, when I draw something on my iPad. I can send it over here to Photoshop and do final uh, critiques on the computer and then print it and do different things like that. So it's definitely a nice thing to have around. Now, CS5 is not officially supported on this operating system, so you have to do some critiques to get it to install. Now I'm going to quit it here, and I told it to quit, but you'll find here in a minute, there it is, it'll say that it quit unexpectedly, and it really didn't. That just has something to do with the operating system because it's not really supported. So you just hit OK and go on about the rest of your day. Here is Final Cut Pro, which I use for video editing. We'll go ahead and open it here really quick. It's a older version, but I find that it runs um, just fine on this machine. The only thing that I've edited on here, at least the highest resolution, is 1080p at 30 frames per second. I've never tried anything higher than that. Um, but of course, it does the same as my modern computer, just it takes longer. You need to wait for it to, you know, render and export and all that kind of stuff but it definitely does the job. So we'll go ahead and quit that. Moving on to the rest of the applications, we already talked about CS5, that works on here. All these other things that you see work just fine. I have um, Minecraft on here and that works just fine. You want to have the settings lower um, and then it'll run smooth enough. We'll take a look at about this Mac here. Here you can see the information I stated when the machine was booting up and the operating system. Here's the resolution of the display, obviously not a retina display. We have our storage, most of that is filled up with the video and editing software. We have memory and of course support and service, but this thing being as old as it is, doesn't have much of that left. I really do hope you enjoyed this quick little overview of the early 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro. I really do love this machine. It has given me years of fantastic use without any issues at all. Putting an SSD in it was probably the best thing that has ever happened to it besides uh, upgrading the RAM over the years. But other than that, it is still a great machine for everyday tasks. I really do hope once again you enjoyed and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.